go into the study of the word today, we receive insights, we receive understanding, we receive illumination, we receive, Lord, insight into all that is your perfect will in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have done. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Glory to God. All right. We're going to our study today. And then we'll do Ecclesia and then go into confession. All right. Today, our study is focusing on the power seasons of the day. Now, when the Lord really put this topic um, in my spirit, I was... I'll tell you this, I was really, really, <laughs> I was really concerned. You know, I was like, ah, God, I hope we are able to see this and really take advantage of it. All right. Because I tell you, the power seasons of the day are being encroached on by the way um, over the centuries, Satan has influenced us to structure our society and our cultures. It's as if Satan knows that if I let these people have this, um, um, this so-called, uh, um, the, the, the powerful things that are from God, I'm just going to lose totally. And well, I think it's, it's true. You know, it's really going to lose. You know, so he has, he has kind of like programmed you know, to make sure that all those things are encroached on and our culture and our societal systems are set in such a way that those things cannot really, it's, it's difficult. You know, these days are, it's so difficult to get out those uh, seasons, the power seasons of the day. And the first one is, is, is one of the most difficult ones now. But it's good to still know so that if you can create it, not if, when you can create it, you should walk on it and, and push to form something around that period of the day. And the first power season, power season of the day that we're looking at is the evening. The evening. In Psalm 8, Psalm 8, verse 3 and 4. Psalm 8, verse 3 and 4. It says, When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, that your mind is thinking about him, and the son of man that thou visitest him. What is man? And God is visiting him. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, he said, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So where was God visiting man? In the cool of the day. In the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. God visited them in the cool of the day. And then if you read Genesis, I mean, Genesis chapter 1, you will see an evening and morning were the first day. An evening and morning were the second day. An evening and morning were the third day. An evening and morning. They were always counting it evening and morning. For example, verse 23. An evening and morning were the fifth day. So, the day really, based on God's counting, all right, starts in the evening. So that's why in the uh, old time uh, setting, which the culture of the time of the fathers created, you know, the culture of Abraham, Israel, because Israel, God gave them laws. They were, you know, what God simply did was that he, he walked with Abraham. Abraham came from all of the Chaldees. He had a culture, you know, that he mixed up with his work with God. But God wanted a nation whose culture will be totally ease, whose traditions will be totally ease, whose observations and the way they operate family and everything will be totally his ideology. And that's what God wants on that. When we say the kingdom of God coming on that, that's what God wants on that. God wants uh, uh, humanity to be run by his 
laws, his culture, the culture of heaven, the ways of heaven, so that as things are in heaven, they can be so here on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in, in that system, we'll get rid of all sickness. There'll be no sickness on earth because there's no sickness in heaven. We'll get rid of all poverty, all that communism, capitalism have been trying to do the, that they couldn't achieve. The kingdom of God is going to achieve it. Everybody will be prosperous, all right? Everybody may not be billionaires, but everybody will be prosperous, comfortable, and healthy and strong. There'll be nobody. I mean, the West have done their best to create societies towards this, you know, and God has helped them because anyone that is moving in the direction of God, God empowers, even when they reject God, even when they hate God, we should understand that so that when they're asking all these questions, why is the, this country, they don't they respect God? See, are they walking in the line of the agenda of God? There's power already released in that direction. So even if the person that is stepping into the flow of the power is an atheist, the power will still carry the person in the direction of God. Because the direction of God is make this place as comfortable as heaven is. Make this place as close to heaven as you are supposed to. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the, that's the agenda of God. That's why he said, have dominion on earth. Rule over everything. Make this place as close to heaven as you can. So every time you are walking concerning advancement on earth, advancement of mankind, advancement of humanity, creation, animals, plants, everything on earth, you will have a backing of God's power because God has already spoken in that direction. And when he has spoken, he doesn't withhold his word. His power goes with it. So even if someone that hates God gets into the flow of that power, that power will push that person in that direction and help the person to achieve what he's supposed to achieve. You understand? And many of these advancements in, 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 in human history were first of all prepared for the saints. It is when the saints are ignorant, they refuse to accept it, that's when God gives it to anybody. That's the way it works. We'll look at that one day, how these things work. Whenever any advancement is going to happen on earth, the first set of people God gives it to are saints, if they are positioned. But if we are into religion, we are into just um, you know, what we call churchianity, then we're not going to make any impact. We must be in science. We must be in architecture. We must be in building. We must be in social science. We must be in microbiology. We must be in all fields so that when God wants to create advancement in that field, you are the one he will bring the thing to first. He brings it to the saints first. It is when the saints are lazy or they are not attending to that and they are just into religiosity, then he looks for anybody who is passionate and who wants to get things done and boom, the person steps in. And most of the time, those people think it is them or it is something, and they call it all kind of names because they refuse God. But you see, we cannot kick against God. The person is still carrying out. Paul said, whether in pretense, whether for gain, whether for uh, despising me or, uh, or, 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 or attacking me or mocking me, the important thing is that the gospel is preached. At the end of the day, the will of God is done on earth. So the worst have done their best. But there are still people living on the street in the West. In the kingdom of God, nobody will be living on the street. Yes, nobody is going to be living on the street. Everybody will be comfortable. Everybody will be healthy. Everybody will have good life because that is the counsel of God. All right? So what God did was God allowed them to go into Egypt. And they went into a mixture of different kind of things because those things were superimposed on them by their masters all right and then god brought out from the midst of that a nation that didn't have any form they didn't have any form they didn't have any particular this is the way we do this there were a little bit of things that they still remember but for 400 years they forgotten so many of their traditions so god now began to form them into what he wanted so the formation was still maintained into the time of christ god told them what to do when to do this, what to do that, these are the rules, these are the regulations, don't do this, do this. If you do this, this is the consequence and all that. And God formed, that's why Moses said, is there any nation on heart that has laws, rules, regulations that are as holy as these rules and regulations that Lord your God has given you? He said, no nation is like you. 
you guys are super. You are super. And God said, I will raise you as a peculiar nation unto me. All right? So they operated those things. So they, 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 they operated evening and morning. And so what did they have? They had um, morning starting at 6 a.m. And that's, the, sorry, the day starting at 6 a.m. and ending at 6 p.m. So the day is 12 hours. That's why when Jesus gave the parable of the man that had a farm, I mean, that had a, uh, yeah, a farm who needed laborers to work on his farm, he went to get them 6 a.m. in the morning because they're going to start working at 6 and they're going to close at 6. That's why Jesus said there are 12 hours in the day when a man must work. I still say that that's the recommended work time. It's not 10 hours, it's not 8 hours. God said 12. All right, so 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then the night season starts. And that night season is actually the beginning of the next day, the evening and the morning. And that's why that evening was very peculiar to God because God comes at the beginning of the day to fellowship with man. He came in the cool of the day, in the evening. He will come, he will fellowship with them, then he will go. He will come, he will fellowship with them, then he will go. Let me read the devotional so we can wrap this up. Each, each day has its evil. Like Jesus said, every day has its own evil. And so also it's good. All right? So they are the good things of each day. There are power seasons of each day. Because anytime God does something, watch what he's doing. Because there's a reason why he's doing it. Why didn't God come in the middle of the night? Why didn't God come during the day to visit Adam? Why did he come in the cool of the day? It's because there's something about that season, you know, that gives that, uh, you can fellowship with God at any time and at any moment, but there's something about the evening that has a very high energy for that fellowship. Something about the evening. Some power seasons are regular, consistent, and cast on stone because God designed them that way. Some were cast on stone because God and some very influential people in the spirit, like the watchers and the holy ones, used the, those periods to carry out certain activities. And so the period in that region became dedicated for that purpose. So it, I, it, I'm just describing how those power seasons are set. Some are set because God just set them and God said this, 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 this. And then we just have to keep them. Why? Because their power season, the energy at, that, at, at those moments in the day is very high for spiritual activities relevant to God. All right? Now, sometimes God and certain people, you know, will have certain uh, interaction and then create an energy moment. Like, when, when, when the first time God told me to visit Israel, like I always share my testimony, Israel was never my radar. It never even came up once in my mind that it's going to be a place to visit, maybe for holiday, for tourism, never. Because I didn't see Israel as a requirement to go to heaven, and it is not. You don't need to get to Israel to go to heaven. And so there was no reason to go to Israel. There was I didn't see tourists thing to go and do in Israel. It, it never came on my radar. So when God said go to Israel, it was like, wow, go to Israel for what? He said, son, there are places I need you to touch. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, everywhere I touch base on earth. He said, a portal is still there. I said, wow. Then I said another, another thing. He said, all the anointings I've ever given on earth, never left earth. They are still here. I said, okay, God, that, um, I'm finding, and he said, I said, please, if you can prove that to me, and uh, he just reminded me of Elisha immediately. Elijah dropped the anointing for Elisha. Elisha died with that anointing because he couldn't pass it to Gehazi, he was, I mean, off key, you understand? And then, years after, because his body had totally decomposed, and it was just his bones, and they threw a, threw a dead body on that bones and the bones came back alive because the anointing was still there. The anointing was still there. I said, wow. He said, so every mantle I've given is still here. Nobody took it to heaven. It is given is here. So people can still tap into those mantles. And then he said, everywhere I touch base on earth, there's still a portal there. I said, wow. So we went to different places. Mount Carmel, 
where fire came down. There are portals in those places where Jesus had transfiguration. Mama, my wife had an encounter in that place. Powerful. The next uh, two years, after, I think two years after or so, we took a note. I mean, the first time we went, I went on my mentor's um, um, Israel tour, uh, Israel uh, uh, visit. Then the next time we went, we led another a team of our own. I, I, I believe by the time we're out of COVID, we'll go back to it. So you can join us. We call it the um, Holy Land Encounter because we see it as a, not tourism, but as a, an opportunity to go and encounter God at some of those portals. There was one man on our team who told me, because people are seeing visions from the very first day we got to Israel and we were going to different spots, people are having encounters, visions and all that. And the man came to me because every day I would ask, okay, what are your experiences, blah, 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 blah. So he wanted to just prepare my mind that he would not have anything to share. So he told me, he said, Pastor, you see, I'm just a simple believer. <laughs> You know, I really don't believe, you know, like you, all this same vision. I'm not sure I will see anything. So just, um, I'm just going to enjoy myself and pray as we are praying and all that. So I said, no, 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 that is not, you know, it's not anything, even if you don't see anything and all that, you know. So I said, beautiful. But you know what? God gave him an encounter. He saw an angel. One of the mornings when we were going out early, you know, we leave um, about eight for those um, trips. And then uh, he got into our bus early and he met somebody in the bus. And the person was very lively and all that. So he sat down. So when his wife came in to join him, he told the wife, said, that person is in the wrong bus. The wife said, who? He said, the person behind me. It's in the wrong, the person behind. The person was like about three or four rows behind. So he said, the person is in the wrong bus. The person doesn't know. Because this is our own boss and the person is not part of our team. The wife said, no, there's nobody there. He was, he was blown away because he saw the person they greeted all that. He saw him clearly. You know, so I told him, I said, that was an angel. God just wanted to show you that, look, it is not, this thing we're talking about is not for super spiritual people. It's just God trying to just show you that, look, we are here. We are real. You may not see us every day, but we are here. That's, the, that's just what God is trying to do. And God gave him a miracle, very powerful miracle. As soon as we landed at the airport from Israel, a position that had never been given to a black in his company, which he applied for, you know, uh, was given to him. And he was the first black person to take that position internationally. All right? You know, so God, God is awesome. Oh, God is awesome. Very, very awesome. So sometimes, you know, things happen between God and people and that time just becomes marked supernaturally as a very strong portal and energy period, I mean, a session in the spirit. And sometimes some seasons of the day are set like that, just like locations can be set like that. Some seasons of the day can be set like that. So sometimes the watchers, the only ones, and God will meet at certain periods and then boom, that period becomes marked and cast on stone as a very significant period of the day. One of the most powerful sections of the day is the evening because of how God used to visit, um, how God used, used it in the beginning when he was creating and when he began to visit man. God checked his results in the evening and started working from evening. All right. God visited man every evening until man fell and had to be evicted from the Garden of Eden. The evening is therefore important and necessary for fellowship. All right? Unfortunately, today, this happens to be the most contested period of the day. <laughs> it's contested seriously. Broadcast industry see, it, they see the evening as peak time for their broadcast. Sponsored programs at this time, as this time, belt pay premium. It's closing time when... Most are trying to get home. Thus, lots of traffic and distractions in Israel. You know, oh God, let me read on. Because of all of this, uh, most have set, uh, set themselves conscious and unconsciously the default of using that period to just, you know, while away time. Watch TV, listen to news, be on social media, watch movies. It's the time when we 
are most distracted. That's what the current system that Satan has influenced. It has created a culture. That's the time we are having the hustling and bustling. We call it the rush hours. And we are so occupied. So many bombardments, left, right, center, and you are tired. You have walked all day, you know. So it's, it's really, really tough. The enemy has successfully stolen this period from mankind. Some have to gain it back, all right, and use it positive, positively until we begin to see the advantage of it. And, 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 and it's important to just set structures and cultures. I don't know whether civil servants still close at 4.30 like they used to when I knew about that in Ibadan in those days. I think, all right, because our societies and uh, cities are built now in such very funny ways. Development is moving so fast, you know. In fact, every country should have a law <laughs> where, you know, we should make sure housing is available and everybody should live not far away from their workplace. Not that you have to travel three hours to workplace, two hours to workplace. It's, it's too much for mankind. It's so much distraction. The evening is the power zone for intimacy with God. Fellowship and meditation are best at this time. If we can redeem it, if you can redeem it yourself, this is one of the power zones men have lost and need to redeem. And that's why I said this one is the, is a difficult one. Why? Because we have built systems and structures contrary to using it for what it's for. Over the years and centuries, we've done that. I, I shared this with some men some time ago, and one of them said, ah, okay, I'm going to redeem it. So what did he do? In his company, once his staff start closing at 5.30, he just tells them that they should lock up and leave him. And so when all have gone at about to six, he says he settles down in his office and starts reading his Bible and is there for two hours from six to eight. His life changed totally. Today he's even a pastor. <laughs> he's still a businessman, but he's a pastor because he was launched into a frequency. I'm not saying that if you become spiritual, you become a pastor because some people say, ah, me, I don't want that spirituality that would make me a pastor. No, no, but I mean, if you if you have a calling of God upon your life, that's it. You have a calling. If you don't have a calling, no, no <laughs> spirituality cannot turn you to, <laughs> to someone that is called. You understand? But what we are simply saying is this. If you can redeem it, please do. Even I that I'm talking to you today, you know, I, I have done a lot with that time. But I cannot even claim I've totally redeemed it. And don't say because pastor hasn't redeemed it. You cannot. You can. You can. It depends on how you set it for yourself. It depends on how you set it for yourself. There was a time that um, I just made up my mind in our office then that I'll just leave late. So once it's evening and I don't have any counseling, I just stay in my office and just, uh, you know, spend time with God. We can redeem it. If we choose to. All right. Even some of our homes, the structure and culture we have created in our home, our house. <laughs> Everybody is either on the TV, movie, or something at that time of the day. I mean, that happens around me too. But every time I remember, I say, God, I have to get this thing and pull it out and put it right. We can redeem that time because the power sector. If God chose that time to visit Adam and Eve. Now, please don't misunderstand this teaching. Every period of the day can be used for anything you want to use it for spiritually. Because God is there all the time. said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But what we are simply saying is that there are certain seasons of the day that the activity of the spiritual for a particular thing is higher and is better to use that period for that thing. You can also use other periods, but it's better to use that period for that thing. And the reason why it's flexible for us in the New Testament is because God knows how the world is structured anti-horse. So he has made it possible for us to be able to plug in into his realm from anywhere and any point that you can enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus, and then that's it. You are in fellowship. 
Oh, but pastor, okay, if I choose to fellowship in the morning and I choose to fellowship in the evening, which one will give me best results? You will determine the best result, your focus, your concentration. But the energy of that period can help you because the energy and the activity is higher there. And that's the power of it. And I pray that God will help us to redeem all that we need to redeem in the name of Jesus. Can you pray this prayer and say, Father, help me to understand each of these zones of the day and use it positively for your glory. Help me to redeem the evening, the cool of the day fellowship time with you in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Say with me, say in the name of Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. All things are new. I'm a brand new person. I'm a brand new man. I have been washed with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I declare today, I am the blessed of the Lord and I am empowered to prosper. I cannot be cursed because my blessing cannot be reversed. I live in sound health. I am born of God. God is love. I am love. I walk in love. God is holy. I am holy. I walk in purity. God is righteous. I am the righteousness of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I walk in the perfection of God's glory and grace. I walk in the glory and the strength of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus, I declare I am head and never tail. I am from above. I and all that are mine, we dwell in God's sacred place, under God's shadow. No evil can befall us. No plague can come near us. In the name of Jesus, I declare the will of God done in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shall live and not die. In Jesus' mighty name. I am God's chosen, God's beloved, God's elect. I'm victorious today. I'm triumphant today. I've overcome all today. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the anointing and the spirit of the move of God is in my life. I manifest the fullness of Christ's presence, Christ's power, Christ's wisdom, and Christ's character. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Praying the Holy Ghost right now. Do sharp parts go do.